Hi writers, welcome to a week one discussion four. This discussion is our first actual discussion where we are jumping into a short story. So we're only reading a handful of short stories in this unit um, because it's a little bit easier to ma uh, manage our interpretations and our application of concepts with a with a, just a few stories rather than trying to read a bunch of short stories. But I do encourage you to choose a few short stories on your own ones that you're familiar with or you have on a bookshelf and you can use a similar process for your own short stories that you that you really enjoy that you really love so our first short story is by kate chopin and it is called the story of an hour it was published in vogue a, f a magazine that many people are familiar with um with the title a dream the dream of an hour and so as writers we can see the evolution of her piece um, it, it turns into the story of an hour when we're reading it. I, I, I put an image on here from the original Vogue because I wanted you to see it. I, th I think it's just a really, uh, it's a snapshot into time. You can kind of see these are some of the uh, types of articles that were in Vogue at that time. And so it's really neat. If you're interested, so this is this was published in 1894, which seems impossible, <laughs> seems so far away. Um, but you can also check out the background of Chopin's story here. If you click on the link, it will take you to um, the story. There is a spoiler alert. It will tell you about the story. So if you haven't read her story, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to want to actually go to it first. And you're going to go to her story in two different ways. Clicking on the PDF that has the, the concepts and terms from the course about what is short story and going to page 14. Um, or you can click on the YouTube link if you would like to listen to the short story being read. Um, the more you can, you can um, ignite your senses, the more enjoyable your reading is going to be. Uh, remember, we're practicing reading strategies in here as well, so I would encourage you to print this document out as 21 pages so that you can write on it. Either write on it or have a journal, a physical journal out where you're writing and taking notes as you read. Remember, we're engaging actively with the text, and part of that as college writers and readers is um, writing, is actually annotating and writing. Uh, words that pop up that you might not know, a question that pops into your head, or a feeling that you get as you're reading. Those are good things to take notes of um, as you're reading. Those are going to embed information. So I'm just scrolling down, close your eyes so you don't get vertigo, to page 14, which is where we have Chopin's short story. So in the very beginning of the story, each of the stories in this packet, we have a bio or a little bit of background information on the author. This one says Kate Chopin 1851 to 1904 we have her date so think about um, basically industrial revolution right the time when education is emerging as an institution uh, factories have emerged as um, production um, and so you have to kind of uh, i would suggest googling this time frame so you can get a good sense of where chopin was coming from when she wrote this piece as readers it's really useful to have that kind of information for when we read a story, it's it's much more meaningful when we understand the history behind where it came from. And so again, um, 1904, you can think about the perspective of Kate Chopin as she's writing this piece. It says, Chopin wrote the story of an hour in the spring of 1984, but it was rejected by many magazine editors, at least once for being unethical. It was She was told it was unethical. And as a reader, you may wonder why, right? We can keep that question. Why was it considered unethical and rejected by publishers? Finally, Vogue published it in December, um, paying Chopin $10 and also the compliment of presenting her to the public as a daring writer. Like the writing of Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Chopin's work helped energize feminists in her own day and continues to do so today. The theme of the story is autobiographical, though the details are not. Chopin, the mother of six, was widowed at the age of 32. A month after finishing the story, she wrote in her diary that if her husband had lived, she would have, she would have to forget the past 10 years of my growth, my real growth. Nevertheless, she does not dismiss marriage as merely a prison for women. A sentence later, she admits that she would have given up her 10 years of growth in the spirit of perfect acquiescence. And so as a reader, you can kind of uh, think about that in the context of her story. You can just jump right in for this discussion into her story. And remember, pay attention to things like the title, that first line drawing you in as a reader. Knowing that Mrs. Mallard was afflicted with a heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her as gently as possible 
the news of her husband's death. So again, this is how we're being drawn into the story. So you can think about why she would make those choices as a writer. So hopping back over to the discussion board, your task here is to read Chopin's story, annotate it, take good notes in your journal, in your own personal um, journal, and to listen to the story if you like to do that, so you can let it sink in. It's, a, it's for comprehension, the number one strategy is rereading. I know that a lot of people don't take the time to do that, but if you're really working on building your comprehension, building understanding what you've read, you would want to reread it or read it more than once. After you have read it, you can check out um, the history of the story and a little bit more on Chopin here with this link. And you're gonna, you're gonna answer one of these questions. You're gonna scroll through these questions and choose one. And then you're going to share your thoughts on it in a solid paragraph, answer one of these questions. So it could be um, explain the symbolism of the blue sky, both in her reminiscence as a young girl and now as she looks out the window, um, or it could be, uh, well, any one of these questions, but again, Choose one that kind of excites you, and then you're going to respond in a paragraph answering that question. Don't forget, this is a discussion, so on all the discussions, you're going to be asked to read and respond to classmates' posts. So for grading purposes, you're going to be asked to read and respond to one classmate's post. And so skim through the posts, check out if anyone hasn't received a response yet, or engage in one that you just find stirring and interesting. Sometimes it will be someone wrote about what we wrote about, or sometimes it will be someone wrote about something we didn't write about, and we find it intriguing or we have questions. So um, this is Chopin's discussion, our first short story discussion. Remember to think about those concepts and terms as you're reading her story. So um, setting, tone, character, um, story arc, all those things that we have in our packet that will help elucidate and lighten up the reading for you. Um, have fun and I look forward to seeing what you post.